Joining us for more on the latest status say manufacturing survey is labor lawyer Michael Bagrim and he joins us via our Zoom link. Um, Michael, thank you so much for joining us here on uh, the late edition. Maybe let's get your thoughts and your reaction when it comes to the latest figures coming out on the manufacturing sector. I mean, shedding over 300,000 jobs. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely tragic and we keep dropping every year. Uh, there are a whole lot of factors. I, I tend to blame government for this uh, because manufacturing is still the lifeblood of job creation. Uh, yes, we know that we're competing with the mining industry. That whole sector is obviously the exporting, but we're not beneficiating anything, so we're not creating jobs. And as you can see from your, your uh, live pictures that you're showing, um, unfortunately, a lot of this is becoming automotive, and especially in the automobile sector, um, we, we're seeing a lot of that where it's becoming automated and we're not employing people uh, through that. We need to look and very carefully concentrate on small business because small business is going to be the future. And when we talk about small businesses, it's normally under 100 employees. And we should be trying desperately as a government to actually try and help small businesses. And that will be the real lifeblood of job creation. The Western province is funnily enough is showing exactly the opposite to what you're seeing, where they actually their manufacturing sector is actually increasing. Uh, we see uh, the finance minister uh, of the Western province, um, uh, Minister Morel Wagner, um, she has declared that she's gonna be obviously putting a lot of money through the Western province into job creation through the manufacturing sector. Um, they're going to support business to do this. And hopefully we did. We need to see more jobs being created. Uh, we had 40% unemployment and the youth, we almost 70%. We have to remove the negative regulations through the Department of Employment and Labor. And of course, also home affairs needs to get its act together. Um, we see in the in the sector, the automobile sector, um, where we should be creating a lot of jobs because we're exporting motor vehicles. Uh, we've just th shown a bad finger to Volkswagen by saying we're not giving their professionals um, permits to come and work in South Africa. Now that doesn't mean anything for the, for them. They'll go and they'll go and manufacture elsewhere. But we desperately need it in this country. We need it, and so. Once again, I'm blaming government for that. The business sector are desperately trying to, to see if they can have the, the turnaround. We've got the raw materials. We've got people. We need the skills. We need to bring in skilled people to train our people. We can't carry on like this. Every single sector is turning down, and especially in this uh, manufacturing industry, it's bad. And we see it every quarter. Every quarter, you report worse oh. and worse figures. How long can we go on for? Yeah. Um, we cannot afford this at all. Mm. In KwaZulu-Natal, for instance, which had a fantastic clothing industry, the manufacturing of clothing, um, that industry is being destroyed by the bargaining councils. The bargaining councils are demanding more and more from these uh, small factories, and they're destroying them. Mm. And that is the job creator of the future. Yeah and government is doing everything in its power to kill okay. it. Now, Michael, I just wanted to ask, of course, uh, you have a li listed a number of factors which have contributed uh, to, you know, uh, the shedding of jobs in the manufacturing sector. You know, one would ask when it comes to the role of load shedding, I know you've uh, focused on government. You've also uh, said a bit here and there uh, when it comes, uh, you know, uh, to technology. But what role uh, uh, does uh, load shedding play in, in know in terms of uh, uh, this job losses in the manufacturing sector at the same time with you know the shrinking economy uh, we have in this country what role that, uh, does that play it certainly does obviously load shedding will always have a role in in the entire economy it's not just in manufacturing um, but like i said the growth should be in small business that we're seeing that all over the world and small businesses can't afford generators and inverters and all that fancy stuff that big business can afford uh, they're just coming to a standstill when there's load shedding so that plays an enormous role and it always will 
uh, until we get our act together and can actually provide electricity to each and every business and not at an enormous expense um, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a big worry for all of us every single person is being affected by it mm. uh, at the end of the day we also must understand uh, that when small business when we're talking about small business they are on an investment strike they don't actually want to invest in their own businesses because they know that the, the economy is shrinking. They know that the uh, electricity is going to be a problem. They know that transport is a problem. We've got problems all around. But mm. I must tell you, there is some light at the end of this tunnel. And that is, I'm starting to see as a labor yeah. lawyer, I'm starting to see some of my small businesses now starting to employ people because manufacturing in the small businesses can actually deliver because our rand is much weaker and so to go and import from for instance china uh, you'd have to bring in masses of goods it takes a long time and it costs more yeah and so we should see a little glimmer of hope yeah, I also wanted to look at uh, the manufacturing sector. You know, of course, you are speaking about moving on uh, to small businesses uh, where you can employ uh, hundreds of uh, people at a time. But one can also ask, can the manufacturing sector recover uh, and be able to generate more jobs? Because you're also mentioning uh, the likes of the Western Cape and they seem to be getting it right. They are getting it right and they are showing us and, and I think that must be practiced in every single province. Um, I know that the Western province has been talking to the Northern province, um, which is also, we've got a young population. People are keen to work. So Africans want to work. They want to get going again. And it has to, we can't say, can, it, can we revive the manufacturing sector? We have to revive the manufacturing system, sector. Yeah. We can't afford not to. And the only way we're going to do that is by getting together, deregulating, uncouple it from big business and get rid of the bargaining councils. All right, then, uh, Michael Bagram, thank you so much uh, for your time here on the late edition. That is uh, Michael uh, Bagram, the labor analyst, just speaking to us about those figures uh, showing that uh, the sector, the manufacturing sector, has lost more than 300,000 jobs since 2005.